Hallelujah. Go ahead. Let's just take a moment right now. Go ahead. Anybody believe those verses? We can sing in the middle of the storm, in the middle of our heartache. He is still worthy of the hand clap. He is still worthy of the jump. He is still worthy of the adoration of the praise. Hallelujah. That's it. Go ahead. Just somebody, just go beyond the comfortable. Go beyond. Just take a little bit step closer to Him. It says He dwells in the praises of His people. And we know where His Spirit is, there is liberty. So if you want the liberty of God to move in this place today, then let's just magnify Him. Go ahead. Let's just clap our hands a little bit longer. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Man, when you are here, you're surrounded not by perfect people, not by, they are pretty awesome people, but not by people that are sinless and blameless. You're surrounded by people here literally that are broken. We're messed up. We're struggling. We're all trying to get to heaven. But when we come in this place, it's like, man, we're reminded, man, we are in this together. We're not on this mission. We're not on this road by ourselves, but we can come here. And as we collectively worship and magnify, something begins to happen. And you see God touch somebody over there. And you see God touch somebody over there. And somebody over there. And somebody over there. And it's like, man, this is exciting. This is this is what this is what it's about right here. Man, amen, amen, amen. 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 With that said, you guys may be seated. We just have a couple of announcements we're gonna make real fast. Uh, coming up. And obviously, uh, you know, wasn't if you were here last Wednesday, wasn't last Wednesday the food good, the prayer good? My goodness, it was absolutely amazing. Yes. Yes, that was awesome. Great food. Thank you, thank you, thank you uh, to those that helped to make that possible. And then just an incredible presence of God that moved from the beginning of that prayer to after. If you are not here on the first Wednesday night prayer, you are missing out because it is absolutely amazing. You could feel it growing and getting better and better and more exciting. And it's just, man, it's awesome. What an anticipation. So coming up, we do uh, a couple things that are coming up. We obviously have our family picnic. That is going to be happening this coming up Saturday. It is November 12th. And it is going to be an awesome time. It is going to be starting at noon, so you will be bringing your own food. Uh, Come on out. It's going to be a good time. If you want to help set up, you can get there at 11 o'clock on Sunday. The very next morning, I do want to remind everybody that we are going to be having life groups, and there is still Sunday school. So that Sunday, come ready, come excited, and just for another awesome move of God. And life groups, aren't they awesome? Man, that's right. I I hear a few people agreeing with that. If you are not part of of a life group, You need to plug in because it is absolutely awesome. Uh, November 23rd, it is going to be the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Uh, There is going to be no service. That's going to be some time allowing you to be able to spend with your family, uh, with your loved ones. So the no service, no midweek service that Wednesday the 23rd. This Tuesday, November 8th, I do want to just remind everybody that it is an election day. So make sure you remember to vote. Don't care how you vote, but make sure you at least do your duty or you don't get to complain. You, You don't get to complain if you don't contribute a vote. So... Uh, with that said, we're going to go ahead, and if anybody has a just an unspoken need, you can lift up your hands just by a show of hands. I mean, if nobody else does, I know we've got plenty over here that do. And So let's just go ahead. We're going to just take a moment. In fact, if we could all stand up right now, and we're going to just begin to come before the Lord. Lord, we thank you right now, God. Yes. God, as we enter into your gates with thanksgiving, we thank you for being so good, for being so merciful, for being so kind. God, we thank you for the very breath in our body because our heart would not even beat another time if it was not for your mercy. We thank you for the ability to be here, to magnify you, to be able to serve you. We enter into your courts with praise, magnifying the name that is above every name, God. God, you see every need, you see every pain, you see every hurt, you see every person that is here today. We ask that you step in. And that you begin to do what it is that you are able to do. We pray that you mend the broken heart, God. That you turn, dear God, these ashes into something beautiful, God. That you step in and begin to provide your peace that surpasses all understanding. We love you. We thank you. You are the miracle worker. You are the way maker. You are the one that we are here today to lift up and to give the adoration and the praise that you alone are worthy of. Blessed be that name that is above every name. Amen, amen, amen. Let everybody say amen. 
Amen. Let's take two minutes real fast and go ahead and greet each other. If you are a guest, this hand clap is for you. Welcome to LRC. Amen, amen, amen. Now let's go ahead. Let's just take a minute or two. Let's shake some hands and welcome them to LRC. Amen. gather back in. We're going to get back into worship. Feel free to join us in the altar this morning.
gonna wait on you, Jesus. Right where I'm at, God. I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. In my circumstances, I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. Say I'm not turning I'm back. I'm not turning back now. No, I'm not turning I'm not back, turning now. back now. I'm not turning I'm back. I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning back now. I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. 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 I'm not turning back now. I can't turn back now. I'm not turning back now. Too far. I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning back now. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. 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 I'm not turning back now. 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 I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. 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 I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning back now. Let's sing it again. I'm not turning back now. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. 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 I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning back. I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning back Say, now. I'm gonna, wait. I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. 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 I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning back.
we thank you, God, for ordering our steps today, Jesus. Mighty is your name, God. Holy is your name, Jesus. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, yes, hallelujah. 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 Have your way. Saturday was silent. Surely it was through. Disappointment is Sunday's empty tomb. Since when has impossible ever stopped you? Come on, sing it with us. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the place make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Pentecostal fire, stirring something new. You're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon. Resurrection power runs in my veins too. I believe, I believe there's another miracle here in this room. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the praise, make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Restore anything that he wants to Just ask the man who was thrown on the bones of Elijah If there's anything that he can do Just ask the stone that was rolled at the tomb Rolled out the tomb in the garden. What 
serve a God that is worthy. Ah, yes, Jesus. Come on, if he's ever done anything for you, if he, if he's ever made a way where there seemed to be no way, if he, if he's ever healed you when you were sick, if he's ever lifted you up when you were down, if he, oh, I wonder if there's a praise in this house today. is able to save he's able to heal he's able to deliver my God is able to do the Bible says exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh within us something great begins to happen when you call on the name of Jesus because all power and all authority resides in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. It is good to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Such a sweet, sweet presence of the Lord that I feel in this place. I do believe and feel that the Lord wants to do something great in this house today. If you believe that, shout amen. I said, if you believe that, shout, Amen. Amen. God has been so good to us. I'm thankful for His blessings that He bestows upon us as His children and as His people. There is no one like our God. There's none beside Him. There is not one that can compare to Him. There is none above Him. For He is God and God alone. He is God all by Himself. Amen. Continue to remember those that may be sick today as you look around and you see someone not here. Shoot them a text, call them, let them know you missed them today. And if they're sick, let them know you're praying for them. And that you're speaking healing into their body, into their situation, and their life. And we're going to believe that sooner or later everybody's going to be better and well and healed. Amen. I rebuke this flu season in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I I do believe I've got a word today. From the Lord, and I I hope to encourage you, and I hope to help someone here today. Amen. If you have your Bibles, if you will turn with me to the book of Psalms, chapter 137. Psalms, chapter 137. I'll begin reading verses 1 and go through verse number 6. I'm reading out of the King James Version today. 
Psalms 137, beginning at verse 1, the Bible says, By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. I want to preach to you today simply from this thought. Don't hang up your harp. Don't hang up your harp. Lord, I I thank you for your presence that I feel in this place. I thank you for your word. God, that's going to be spoken and delivered in this place. I pray, God, that every believer in this house would open their mind, open their hearts, their ears, and receive, oh God, what you're speaking in the midst of us here today. God, I pray that you would help us to apply your word to our life and help us to hear, oh God, what you're speaking and what you're wanting to do here among us. God, I'm believing for greater things. I'm believing for miracles, signs, and wonders. I'm believing, oh God, the gifts of the Spirit are already in operation in this house here today as we've come to worship you in spirit and in truth. God, I am praying that you would continue to have your way, God, and let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. God, we thank you for all that you're going to do in this place. I thank you. I give you all the glory and all the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, I do pray. And the church said... Amen. Thank you for standing. You can be seated. Don't hang up your harp. In our scripture today, we find a nation of people who have been vanquished by the armies of Babylon. Their beloved and holy city, Jerusalem, has been ransacked and it has been set on fire. The beautiful temple that had been built by King Solomon has been desecrated and left in ruins. And the once proud nation of Israel has been placed in chains and and marched away as slaves into a strange and a foreign land. The very people who were known throughout the world for their beautiful songs of worship to God, the God of their salvation, have now been reduced to Uh, listening to the taunts and the ridicules of their captors. The Babylonians had listened carefully to Israel's songs of praise as they studied their enemy. They heard them as they sang one of the Psalms of David. They listened as the Israelites sang, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, come upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. And though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. And one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. They listened and they remembered. And in celebration of their great victory over Israel, these captors mocked the people of God with cruel requests. Y'all hang with me. They told the Israelites, Sing us! One of the songs of Zion. And the people of God replied with a question. A question that I believe was directed more to themselves than to their enemies. The Israelites said, How shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign or in a strange land? You see, this sad account of The people of God finds them at one of the lowest points 
of the rich history. I would like to suggest to you today that there is a message of hope hidden in the text and a challenge to don't hang up your harps. (laughs) The psalmist said, By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof, for there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And the psalmist records this question. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? See, Babylon was a strange land to them. The word Babel, which is the root word of Babylon, means confusion. And so these people of God find themselves in unfamiliar territory. They were depressed. They were dismayed. They were dysfunctional. See, listen, life has a way of always carrying us to Babylon. And even in Babylon, there is something that we must not do. Don't hang up your harps. And don't... (laughs) Don't stop singing. Y'all ain't hearing me yet. I, I need somebody to hear what I'm trying to tell you today. Because the enemy wants nothing more than for you to hang up your harp and for you to quit singing. We we read it in verse 2. We hanged up our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. The words of the psalmist create for us a, a very visual image of weeping saints standing at the edge of the river in the midst of the weeping willow trees. Their heads hung low in shame and defeat. And he says... There we hang our harps. It was there at the river's edge among the willows in a mood of spiritual dejection and defiance that they decided to hang up their instruments of music and worship. You see, those who made this decision were the temple musicians. They had once provided a valuable service to people of God and and the work of the Lord. See, two things caught my attention in the text that and they are that they 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 both speak of a future hope. Y'all hang with me, I'm going somewhere. The first thing that caught my attention is that these prisoners brought their hopes with them on their march into captivity. So some I need you to get this. So somewhere in the back of their minds, even though their city and their homes had been destroyed, even though they were now in chains being led away into a strange land, they remained hopeful that the time would come when they would be able to play the Lord's songs once again. Even in times of mourning and sorrow, God will give you a ray of hope. Man, for getting an extra hour of sleep, y'all are dead today. The second thing that caught my attention is even though their enemy verbally assaulted them and insulted them on a daily basis, they did not destroy their harps. They didn't throw their harps away. They simply just hung them up. Again, somewhere in the backs of their mind was a flicker of hope That there would come a time that they would be able to pick up their harps once again and play the Lord's song. Listen, I've seen it countless times. As we grow older, sometimes we feel tired and we're worn out. Even in the ranks of the church and we feel less useful. Our voice may not be as clear as it once was. Our health may be declining. And the devil has a way of saying, you have done your part and no one appreciates you, so just quit. (laughs) You hear me, seasoned saints, you better not quit on what God is doing. We still need your voice in this church. Listen, okay, I'm not speaking for everybody else. I still need your voice in this church. I still need your prayers. 
See, I, our voice may not be as clear as it once was. See, sometimes a church congregation goes through changes and our, intentional, our initial reaction is to pack it up and quit. But my God, hear me today. Don't you dare hang up your harp. Oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Because these Israelites, listen, they may have hung up their harps in the willow trees, but they never intended to stop playing and singing. Their harps may have been silent for a season, but they left the door open for the time when they would be able to make music and songs once again. Listen, God will always leave the door of opportunity open for your singing. Don't you dare hang up your harp. Oh, my Lord Jesus. This may be a different season in your life, but God is right there with you in the place that you are. Don't hang up your harp. Don't you stop singing. You need to dare to sing. Your song, oh, your song is a testimony that others need to hear. In verse 4, we heard the voice of the singers. And they asked the question both of their captors and of themselves. They said, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? The request of their captors was an unreasonable as it was insulting. How could they, as they had been drug in chains from their homeland, be expected to sing one of the sacred songs of the Lord just to entertain them. See the Babylonians were enemies of both Israel and their God. How could the Babylonians expect laughter. And entertainment from people in a state of poverty and oppression. The songs required of the singers were songs that were appointed by God. And these songs were to be sung in God's honor and God's service. These songs were not Israel's songs, but they were the Lord's songs. How then could they be sung in a strange land for the entertainment of a strange people who were enemies of God? And like the temple musicians, these singers thought that they had no choice in the matter except to respond with their silence. But while they refused to sing in a strange land... And while they refused to entertain that of an unworthy audience, they did not declare that they would not ever sing again. You see, so often troubles and trials have a way of stealing our song. For the child of God... Our songs are testimonies of praise to God, and they are a witness to others. Our songs are verbal expressions of our joy and how connected that we are to God. And so when you sing the Lord's songs, those around you are, are offering a glimpse into the relationship between you and your God. Our songs express our praise to God, our witness to others, and our hope for the future. So even during oppression and trials, we have a choice. Somebody look to your neighbor and tell them, you have a choice. Trouble may be knocking at your door, but you've still got a choice in the matter. <laughs> we cannot choose our circumstances. We may not be able to choose our situations. Oh, but we can choose how we respond to those things. We can always sing the songs of the Lord. I need you to hear me. Because as soon as trouble comes your way, you can expect your enemy, the devil, to taunt you with the question of where is your God now? Anybody ever had the enemy speak that into your life? Oh, where, where's God now? <laughs> what happened to your songs of praise now? 
Listen, it's easy to sing and give praise to God when everything in our life's going right. But the moment we begin to walk through the deepest, darkest valley of our life, that's when we've got to get a gumption of praise to rise. Oh, my God. Listen, but yet silence. Listen, Israel's silence was a form of protest and resistance. Yet silence can be misunderstood as a victory for our enemy. Don't hang your harps up. Don't you dare stop singing. Listen, Israel hung up their harps and they stopped singing because their joy had been destroyed. They, they could not sing because they were out of their element. They, were, they found themselves in a strange land. They are being held captive in a strange land. See, captivity has a way of paralyzing both the hand and the mouth. The musicians couldn't play. And the singers couldn't sing. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse number 10. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. This scripture reminds us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. You ready? Singing stirs up joy that is within you. (laughs) Singing stirs up the Lord's joy within you. Don't hang up your harps and don't stop singing because others that are being held captive are listening to you for a sound of hope. Just like verses 5 and 6, we hear the resolve of the Israelites. They said, If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. These singers declared that even though this harp was hanging and their voice was silent, they had not forgotten how to play or sing. Even though Jerusalem lay in ruins, he would not forget their joy and her glory. If they did, oh, if they did forget or ever played for the enemy, then let those uh, y'all ain't hear me yet. <laughs> They said, then let me lose my skill in the use of my harp if I ever turn and play for the entertainment of my enemy. The singers vowed that if they should ever forget the holy city of Jerusalem and what it represented to the people of God, let me lose my voice and all its power of melody and praise. They were devoted to Jerusalem and vowed never to forget it. But if only Israel had been devoted to the Lord... Amid their calamity and suffering, Israel had the presence of mind to remember. They remembered and vowed never to forget Jerusalem. Listen, regardless of your circumstances, don't hang up your harps. Don't you quit singing. It was admirable that they vowed to remember. They seemed to only remember Jerusalem, the temple, and their former positions. Yet they seemed to have forgotten God. They had forgotten the one who had brought them through the Red Sea. They had forgotten the one who delivered them from the wilderness. And presently they were in captivity because they refused to remember their covenant relationship with the God of their fathers. Listen, don't you forget who we serve. Then don't hang up your harps. <laughs> Because of their sin and their disobedience of Israel, the Babylonians were allowed to invade and defeat and take over Israel. Listen, we cannot allow the trials of today or the troubles of tomorrow to steal our songs. Don't hang up your harps because there is still work to be done. I said there's still work yet to do. I know someone saying, well, I I can't play an instrument. I can't sing, so you're not preaching to me. Wrong. Everybody in this place has a song in you. (laughs) 
Last time I checked, the Word of God said, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Go to Psalms chapter 100, verses 1 through 5. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with... Not if you can sing. It just said, Come with singing. Know ye that the Lord, <laughs> He is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. You ready? I'm about to hurt your feelings. So that scripture tells me that even if you can't carry a tune in a bucket. Don't hang up your harp. Don't quit singing. Listen, you've got to remember why you do what you do. It is to bring glory and honor to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And his name is Jesus. Woo! If you're with me, shout amen. I'm getting there. And so this psalm that we read today in chapter 137 is filled with pain and brutally, is brutally honest. And each line of the psalm drips with blood and tears for, for a dream gone bad and a way of life that has turned sour and a, a beautiful home, homeland life lost that, that is nothing but a distant memory now. This is what I need you to get today. You paying attention? There's a very sad irony in this psalm. The Israelites said they couldn't sing in a strange land, and yet they were singing. I've got some of you baffled now. You know why? Because the Psalms are songs. Y'all ain't with me. They were singing, but they were singing a song of defeat. They were so down that they were singing, we'll never sing joyful songs again. We, we, we've hung up our harps and, and we've put that idea to bed. We, we have before us a picture of some people that when conditions changed and surroundings changed, when, when they had turned in a way they didn't like, they hung up their harps on the willows. They were for all intents and purposes fair weathered singers. Just like today, we've got too many fair-weathered Christians. Mm. Uh, if everything's going all right, I may see you Wednesday night at Bible study, Pastor. If I don't have anything else better to do, I, I may see you at church Sunday, Pastor. Listen, some did it in anger and in protest, but some did it in depression and despair. Listen, no matter what the reason was, by their actions they were saying they would only sing for God when things were going the way they wanted them to go. Listen, the result of their hanging their harps in the willows is simply this. The devil who couldn't defeat them with life-controlling sin has still defeated them by stealing their songs of faith from them. They have become demoralized. And they are captives not just by location, but their souls have become captive of defeat and despair and depression. Because these Israelites stopped trusting God in the hard times. And they hung up their harps. And now instead of singing, their mouths are filled with anger and hatred and cursing. If we don't learn to control our words, our words will get out of control. So how can we sing the songs of Zion in a foreign land? I'm going to give you the answer. By not letting circumstances circumvent our praise. 
I got a simple question for you today. Has God changed? Is it still true that Jesus died on the cross for every human alive today, for all humanity? Is that true? Then sing about that. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Listen, you don't have to have a voice to sing. <laughs> Y'all ain't hearing me still yet. Is it still true that he washed away all of our sins by his cleansing and redeeming blood? Then sing about that. For it reaches to the highest mountain. Woo! Y'all ain't hearing me yet. <laughs> Is it still true that he promised that he's still working everything out for our good? Then sing about that. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. There's something you can sing about today. There's always a good reason to praise and worship our God. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying, don't be a circumstantial praiser. I'm telling somebody, don't you hang up your harp. Just because things aren't going your way, don't hang up your harp. Don't quit singing. Don't let the fact that you're in a strange land cause your praise to become foreign to you. Let's consider the phrase foreign land. A foreign land is a place away from home. An unfamiliar territory. A place of suffering. A place that we don't recognize. A place that we feel out of place in. Musicians and singers, if I can get you to come. Listen. Many times in life, we're going to feel out of place. I said there's going to be more times than not in your life that you're going to feel out of place. We can never allow feeling out of place to become a justification to stop singing and praising God. Listen, where we're at in life... Where we're living in this season of life will never change one fact about God. He's still worthy to be praised, even when we find ourselves in a foreign land. When we find ourselves in a foreign place, there will always be those who make fun of us or taunt us. Go ahead, sing a song of Zion. Babylonians made fun of them and said, Sing us one of those songs of victory while you're being held captive. And it is in those times with the enemy whispering, mocking thoughts in your ear that we have to decide whether we're going to sing or whether we're going to hang up our harps. Stand with me all over this place. The foreign land is going to test your faith. The foreign place is going to test your hope. And it's going to test your commitment. It is in the foreign land where we discover what we really are whether we really have a song or not. See, your praise in a time of captivity will move God to do mighty things. I'm telling you, 
I've been there. But there's something about when you feel like you're being held captive and you feel like all hope is lost. And in that moment, you just begin to lift your voice and just sing a song of praise. It don't have to be anything special. Jesus, I love you, I love you. (laughs) Jesus, I love you, I love you. It could be simple. It doesn't have to be anything extravagant. Because the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. And so when you begin to sing songs of praise, whether you can sing or not, it gets the attention of God. And in that moment, he stops whatever he's doing. And he says, I hear a song of praise being lifted up to my name. And so I'm going to stop right now and I'm going to, oh my God. And I'm going to begin to step into whatever situation they find themselves in. Look, there's nothing too hard that you're going through right now that God can't intervene in. It's in the foreign land that you discover who you really are. And whether you have a song or not. Your praise, your worship to God. In those times of captivity. It moves the heart of God. Praise begins to bring God's presence into your situation. Hear me. Refusing to hang up your harp brings divine reinforcements. Someone here today may be saying, well, Pastor, I'm facing a situation where it's hard to sing. It's hard to even give God praise. I'll tell you why. Because some of you have hung up your harp. And you've realized... It's not the right thing to do. We need God to bring back the songs of joy. No matter what circumstances we're facing right now. Someone in this house right now needs to declare, I'm picking up my harp again. I've come to encourage someone today. Don't hang up your harp. Don't stop singing. Continue to sing with everything in you. Come on, I'm reminded Paul and Silas sitting in the midst of captivity in the jail. The Bible says at midnight they begin to lift their voice and sing songs of praise unto God. And in that moment, God stepped in. The Bible says the entire jails rattled and shook. And every jail cell became open. And every shackle and every chain was loose. Listen, everybody, not everybody in the jail cells were singing. Everybody was held captive. But it only took a couple. to come into union with God and begin to lift up the name of Jesus and in that moment the presence of God began to shake the place I've come to tell somebody today that in the midst of your captivity if you can just lift your voice for a single moment God is going to step in and begin to shake the place who am I talking to right now? 
The devil's been whispering in your ears. Come on, he's trying to he's trying to mock you. He's trying to taunt you. Come on, sing us a song of Zion while you're held in captivity. Listen, don't you hang up your harp. Don't you squ- oh. Don't quit singing. You've got a song within you that God is desiring to hear. Come on, it doesn't matter if you can sing. It doesn't matter if you can play an instrument. But God is just desiring right now. Don't hang up your harp. Don't quit singing. I have got something special in store for you. But I want to hear the songs of Zion coming from your lips. I want to feel the praises coming from your voice. Come on all over this house. Who am I talking to right now? These altars are open. Come on. I wish I wish that everyone would make their way down to this altar. I wish that everybody under the sound of my voice, come on, would make your way down to this altar. Begin to pick up your harp again. Begin to get the song in your in your heart again. And begin to declare that I will not be defeated. I will win. I will all that I have is a Come on. If you can't say anything else, just sing hallelujah. Just sing hallelujah. It's not hard. Oh, I sing hallelujah. Say it again. into your life. Come on. Let the song of Zion come from your lips in this moment. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus.
except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. for a heart singing hallelujah hallelujah won't you come up my soul oh don't you get shy on me lift up your song cause you've got a lion in You've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Oh, come on, my soul. Come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. your song cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs get up and praise the Lord come on my soul oh don't you get shy on me lift up your song cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs get up and praise the Lord Come on, my soul. Come on. Oh, don't, don't you let get the enemy shy on me. Lift 
Don't let the enemy song. steal your voice. You Come got on. a lion inside of us. Rise up and Get say, up and I refuse to hang up my heart. I refuse to quit singing. I'm still going to lift my voice. I'm still going to praise the Lord. I'm still going to sing songs of praise. You got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I 
I feel that the Lord prompted me as I was praying with Sister Cindy. Lord, and I, I prayed this over her, but I feel this for some others in this house right now. I feel the Lord prompted me to tell you that he's given you a new song. Mm, my God. The song, the song that you may have been singing going into captivity is not going to be the same song as you come out. <laughs> God is trying to tell you and speak into your life right now that I am giving you a new song. As the song says, that the angels cannot sing. <laughs> this is a song that only He's giving to you and only that you are going to know the words in the tune to. And so God is saying, and I'm giving you a new song, so I'm expecting you to sing it. <laughs> Pastor, I'm not much on singing. Well, that's all right. Singing to the Lord, anyways. Singing to the Lord, a <laughs> a new song. God has given some of you a new song in this house. I want to encourage you to sing it with everything in you. And as you sing it, it will invite the presence of God to where you are. And in that moment, God can begin to move and begin to, to make things new again. Even in the midst of your captivity, lift your voice. Don't hang up your harps. Don't sing in defeat. But sing the praises of my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Sing the praises of the one who's going to bring you out. Sing the praises of the one who's going to make a way when there seemed to be no way. Sing the, sing the praises of the one who's going to provide for you. Sing the praises of the one who's going to heal you. <laughs> oh, sing worthy. <laughs> Are you Lord God Almighty? Oh, Come on, sing it if you know it. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Holy. Oh, come on, hands lifted all over this house. Are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the
Listen. You may not be able to sing, carry a tune. You may not be able to play an instrument. But listen to your pastor. Keep singing. We may not invite you to sing on the platform, but that doesn't mean you still can't sing. Come on, somebody. You've got a song that God has placed in your life, so sing it for the glory of God. And let the Lord be glorified in all things. Amen. God has been so good to us. Lord, I thank you for your presence. I thank you for all that you've done in this house. I thank you for how you've moved, how you've spoken in the life of every believer. Lord, I thank you for your presence, God, and how you've swept into this house for touching us, for moving in our life, for ministering, oh God, in the ways only you can. I pray, oh God, that you would continue to order our steps and continue to show us your ways. Guide us, oh Lord. Help us to walk in the truth of your word, to stand upon the authority of your word, and to declare the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God, I speak healing to all those that are still battling sickness. God, I speak provision to those that are battling financially. God, I, I, I speak protection to those, God, that are having family situations and marital situations. God, I pray right now, oh God, that you would minister and begin to step in and intervene in every situation represented. Go with us from this house. Keep your hand upon us. Keep us safe. Keep us all healthy. Bring us back here Wednesday night ready to hear your word and ready to receive from you. God, will be careful to give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I do pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, quickly. I meant to announce this before I got started preaching. I know we're still about three or four months away, but the IAF conference is coming up the end of February. It's the last Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I believe, of February. Yeah, 22nd. 23rd and 24th of February and it'll be in Nashville actually Madison but it's around Nashville it's about a five hour drive from here if you are interested I've been told that the rooms are going fast up there evidently there's something else going on in the area so a lot of people are booking rooms so if you're interested um, I would encourage you go ahead and make a phone call go ahead and book a room if you're planning on going if you want to go at least go ahead and reserve a room and you can cancel it at a later time if you need to but again February 22nd 23rd and 24th um, if you want to go I'm I think I'm staying at the Country Inn and Suites in Madison um, which is right down the road from the church so you're welcome Madison Goodlettsville anywhere around that area you can find um, a hotel I, I, if you want to go I would encourage you to go it's a great time in the Lord and we come together and worship and, and hear from God Amen God bless you we love you we'll see you back here Wednesday night have a blessed remaining part of your week in Jesus name